Stay right there in your easy chair for 30 minutes of pleasure. Don't you go, it's more than the show. It's the talk of the desert. It's the talk of the desert with Paul and the Reed. I just love coming home at night. I turn around, she's a treasure. Now, here's Melinda. There's an absolutely fantastic new organization that we all have to support. And if I don't cry, <laughs> I'll make it through this episode. But it's called Dogs for Our Brave. And the founder of the organization is Andy Gladstein. Andy, welcome to Talk of the Desert. I can't believe it. I was here at a reception a couple of days ago. And what you've done for these young military people is unbelievable. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And let's introduce our two guests. Uh, we've got um, Clark, uh, I should say Corporal Clark Cavalier. Right. who is um, a Marine, and um, First Sergeant Chris Roseberry, who's Army, yep. and they both have been given their service dogs that are sound asleep on the floor right now <laughs> <laughs> from, from Dogs for the Brave, which is just a fantastic organization. And let's watch this video, and it'll introduce the organization so we can understand a little bit more about it. We'll be right back with uh, our gentlemen and our dogs. Freedom. It's what our country was founded on. It's what our soldiers fight for. But tragically, it's one of the things so often lost when they come home. A wounded vet loses the freedom of mobility, of independence, of choice. Dogs for Our Brave was created to give that freedom back. Our mission is to provide professionally trained service dogs to our military heroes who have suffered catastrophic injury or disability at no cost to the service member. By using only rescued dogs, we help to create better, more fulfilled lives for both dogs and veterans. All of our dogs have been rescued from shelters or surrendered by their owners. They receive vigorous and extensive training, taking up to eight months or longer before placement with a disabled veteran. It's a new lease on life for both soldier and dog, but it all comes at a price. Training is expensive, anywhere from fifteen dollars to $20,000 per dog. VA benefits only go so far, and many wait years for a service dog. This is where you can help. Through your generous gift, you can help provide training, medical attention, and daily care for a service dog and cover the cost of placement. 100% of your gift goes to the program, and no service member is ever charged. Between the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, an estimated 4,600 service members have lost limbs. Many of them still need assistance with mobility and companionship. This is your opportunity to give back to the men and women who have given so much for all of us and help fulfill the promise that America has always made to its soldiers, that we leave no one behind. Freedom. It's what we cherish. It's what they fought for. Let's give it back to them. To come up with this organization to honor and pay tribute to our military people that need this help is just fabulous. Tell us your personal side of the story. Well, Melinda, I was in Coronado about three, a little over three years ago, and I ran into a Navy SEAL while having lunch one day, and we were talking, and we became friends over the next couple of days. And uh, I was asking him and his wife, you know, what do I get my wife for an, an anniversary present, a 37th anniversary present? And he said, why don't you get her a dog and get it trained for one of our veterans that's come back from the war on terror? And I looked at him like, what? <laughs> and he said, yeah, get a dog, train it, and give it to your wife as a gift. And I thought to myself, wow, that's a really unique gift. <laughs> and so I did it. And I gave it to this wonderful young uh, army sergeant uh, who was a double amputee and I had the 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 the, the handoff videoed and uh, showed it to some of my friends and they were all like well I want to do the same thing and I said oh geez I, I see this blossoming into something <laughs> bigger and it did and uh, it became 
uh, a labor of love. And I got to meet these wonderful guys. And uh, I should say guys, these heroes. Yes, that's right. And uh, got to hear these wonderful stories and got to start meeting these these gentlemen and, and ladies. And it's blossomed into this great organization. Uh, and you realize what these, these guys have gone through. And uh, the organization has uh, turned into something really special. Sure has. Sure. There's no question about that. Now, Chris, tell us your story about how you lost your leg. So <clears throat> my, my uh, injuries were combat related. I got hurt back at Fort Bragg, North Carolina in a uh, vehicle accident. Um, I was, the obvious one is I lost my right leg below the knee. Uh, I also broke my neck. Um, I see two through C7 vertebrae in my neck, and I had my right arm bone graft back together. Um, so it was a little, I, I spent about a year and a half at Walter Reed. Um, begged to get out of there so I could get back to Fort Bragg. So they released me, sent me back to Fort Bragg where I finished all my physical therapy. I know that the time I spent at Walter Reed, I saw young soldiers like uh, Clark come back with injuries way beyond what I had. And that was my motivation to, uh, you know, to get out of there and get back and uh, do everything I could to get back to work. And I was blessed to uh, be able to continue another 12 years of service and just retire uh, back this last uh, past December after uh, 21 years of service. In the Army. Absolutely. Yep. And now you've gone overseas. I have. I've, uh, With your prosthetic leg. Correct. Yeah, yes, went, that's uh, pretty amazing. I went, went, back, uh, went back to Afghanistan twice. Uh, and it was the fact that I was able to do that and lead uh, my soldiers uh, in combat was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, and, you know, my, me missing a leg didn't deter anyone from uh, not thinking I could do it. Uh, I just continued, my senior leadership blessed me and continued to put me into uh, positions of greater responsibility. And, um, you know, I, it was great. I, mean, I had full support from, from everybody. It was, it was pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. And Clark, share your story with us, please. I was deployed to Feldman Province, Afghanistan, and I was on a foot patrol one morning, and we were jumping a canal, and when I jumped, I landed just right and landed on a pressure plate. And from there, luckily I had amazing guys with me. They took care of me, got me to safety, stopped my bleeding and everything, and then I was sent. I woke up a week later in Bethesda, Maryland at the Navy Hospital, where I spent the next four and a half years there doing therapy and surgeries, all kinds of stuff. And I just retired summer of 2015. Yeah, summer of 2015. And so let's go back here to Dogs for the Brave. Andy, how did you meet Chris? Um, well, let me back up a okay. second. A pressure plate means he stepped on an IED. Oh, okay, thank you for that clarification. An, yeah. an improvised explosive device. A lot yes. of people don't realize the pressure plate means he stepped on a bomb. Yeah. yeah. And it blew his legs off, unfortunately. Um, I met Chris at Walter Reed, um, which is where a lot of soldiers go to, to get uh, put back together, mm -hmm. so to speak. And uh, Chris and I became buddies and... Uh, he was, one, he was one of the first soldiers that got a dog from Walter Reed. And from there, I met Clark. Uh, and uh, Chris has become a kind of a lead guy for us, introducing us to other soldiers who need dogs. And when I met Clark, uh, Clark was in the physical therapy department. And uh, Clark was kind of an angry guy when I met him, hmm. to say the least. To say the least, yeah. Uh, Clark was in there working out, and I walked up to Chris and I said, "Hey, who's this guy here?" He said, well, "That's Clark." And I said, "Clark, you, you want a dog?" And Clark had been trying to get a dog for quite a while. <clears throat> and unfortunately, it takes if you go through the VA, it takes anywhere from four to six years, uh, and about what two feet worth of paperwork. It's a lot. It's a bit. It's a bit much. If, if they can find a dog for him. And I asked Clark if he wanted a dog, and Clark says, yeah, but I, I probably will never get one. And uh, I said, well, we're going to get you a dog. And Clark looked at me and went, who is this guy? <laughs> and I won't use the words that Clark used. 
because it's a family show. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but he looked at, at Chris and goes, Chris, blank, this guy. <laughs> and I said, no, Clark, we're going to really get you a dog. And Clark said, are you serious? I said, yeah, it takes about six months to get a train right for you. And Clark's face lit up. I mean, I got a picture of him with smiling, and I, I got really choked up. And yeah. I do to this day. <laughs> Absolutely. Be, because these guys are heroes. Oh, no, it's your total question. <laughs> I mean, 20 years old, <clears throat> pardon me, 20 years old, he loses both his legs. He's in the hospital for four and a half years. I mean, I was a bit angry. Yeah. Let, a, let I can't, a stuff I can't, piled up. I can't grasp it yeah. yet. I go in the hospital for two days, and I can't wait to get out. Yeah. Can you imagine being in the hospital for four and a half years? Yeah. And uh, when we got to Josie, um, Josie's helped Clark calm down. Josie knows when Clark gets angry. Josie comes up to him and she'll just, she can tell from my tone or my body language that I'm getting agitated and she'll come up to me and just nudge me until I pet her. And if I stop petting her and I'm so agitated, she'll nudge me and nudge me and nag me and nag me until I pet her and I it's calm down. The woman down. in your life. <laughs> yeah. So she'll she'll do, she'll she's really good about calming me down. That's and, fantastic. Yeah. Can we back up here for just a second? How, Chris? How did you get Gabby, your the first dog here? Uh, so for, our, for dogs for our brain. So Andy and uh, Andy and I talked, uh, and uh, you know he, he let me know, hey, we're gonna get your dog. And I was like, oh, that's great. Well, a couple weeks after that, Andy called me and. So I want to fly out to St. Louis. Uh, I was like, he goes, I want you to meet some people. I was like, okay, that's great. A day later, he called me and said, hey, do you want to throw out the first pitch to the Cardinals guys? Yeah, it'd be awesome. I was like, that's good because I told him you would. So, <laughs> so I thought I was just flying out to St. Louis, you know, to do a little meet and greet. We're going to promote uh, Dogs for Our Brave. And I was going to go out and throw out the first pitch. And uh, after I, I threw out the first pitch, I was walking up to uh, talk to the catcher. And... Um, Notice Andy, frankly, in the background saying, Chris, turn around, turn around. They, they, I guess they announced it over the PA that they were bringing Gabby out. I didn't hear anything. And I'd seen pictures of her, but I'd never physically met her. So after I saw Andy over there doing cheetah backflips to try to get my attention, <laughs> I uh, turned around and uh, the trainer was walking out uh, with Gabby. So that's the, uh, the first time I officially physically met Gabby. And how many months after that did you take her as your... Uh, so they, your partner, what do you, you your companion it dog? Was the following months, about thirty okay. days. Thirty days later, they uh, the trainer brought her to me and physically, you know, finally placed her with me. Um, and here we are, two years later. Two years later, and you're the first um, master and dog. How do you companion handler, handler, Han yeah. handler and yep. dog uh, for our dogs for our brave, yep. which is fantastic. And then you're the second one, Clark. How exciting! And we've got some four that are coming up that are in training right now. We have four dogs in training, yes, and unfortunately. Uh, we had four servicemen, service people in line for the dogs. Uh, one of them took his own life in January. So we're looking for one more service person right now to fill that spot. And how do you apply to get this other dog? And um, how do you apply for future dogs? Well, we have these two gentlemen, fortunately, are out there talking to the friends of theirs who are amputees. And uh, we do something a little different, Melinda. Uh, you don't have to be in combat or in a combat-related accident, as Chris wasn't. If you're a serviceman or service lady in uniform for, in service to the country, you can get a dog from us. Uh, and uh, so there's a lot of, of men and women who are in service to the country uh, who have been injured themselves in catastrophic injuries that need dogs. So we're right now actively looking for the right person because you have to match the right dog up with the right service person. And uh, we're going to find the right person in the next couple of weeks to take that fourth spot Good for this next round of dogs. And how many dogs are you going to be training at one time? That You have a trainer, I know, lives in Arizona, who was yeah. here at this reception, and it was we phenomenal. Can train, we can train four to six dogs every four to six months. So we can do reasonably 12 dogs a year. We've already done nine, and we've got these four, four going out in probably June, July, yep. and then we'll yeah. start another four to six. So, gentlemen, uh, who everyone wants to go first? How have these dogs made a difference in your life? All right. Uh, well, Josie, she's trying to pick stuff up for me, carry stuff for me if I need be. Uh, she can brace a little to where I can get up. And something that she wasn't trained to do, 
is like I said earlier, where she calms me down. She wasn't trained to do that at all. She just started doing it. And it's, uh, I call it my Christmas miracle. I got it right before Christmas in, uh, 2015. And, uh, so she's been amazing. Just changed my life. I was, they'll, they can tell you I was pretty angry person beforehand. And since I've gotten Josie, uh, She's just been amazing for me. It gives you something to live for, to take care of her so she can take care of you, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. he's, definitely, he's definitely changed leaps and bounds for, since he's had her using, and rightfully so. I mean, he's a young 20-year-old kid, lost both his legs, had, had tons of life ahead of him now, you know, because of uh, his accident. I mean, thank, everything's changed. Um, so she has immensely helped him out. And it's, it's amazing. I can remember <laughs> for the first time I met Clark, uh, he was a little angry firecracker and, uh, since he's had her. He's, he's really calmed down. That's fantastic. Fantastic. And how has Gabby changed your life, Chris? Oh, she's helped me out tremendously. I mean, it doesn't matter how, how long you've had uh, a disability injury. You always have your good days and your bad days. And uh, she's helped me brace, retrieve. Uh, she'll push buttons to open doors. You know, for those days when I'm having bad leg days, I'm on crutches or whatnot. Um, you kind of like Clark said, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, kind of like Clark said, uh, she, um, Wasn't when I have nightmares, she's just learned to uh, hop up in the bed, lick my face, and wake me up. Uh, and, and she'll stay there until I sit up. Um, so, she's, she's indirectly just figured out how to do that. I mean, she wasn't trained to do it. Um, but, you know, dogs are smart. When we're with them 24 hours a day, you know, they pick up on things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, she's been, she's been amazing. That's wonderful. Well, there, uh, Josie, I just, I adore both of them, but she's very calm and cool and relaxed. And Gabby's a little more get, uh, go yeah. get her, I think. <laughs> yeah, you, Chris, you said that, that your personality kind of matched her yeah, personality. Yeah, personality that absolutely matches. Yeah. Because uh, I'm an outdoors person. I like to go hiking. I like to try to do uh, marathons and runs and things like that. And she'll, she does them with me. Uh, she's got the energy to do it. She's got the will to do it. So uh, she, her and I are definitely a, a perfect fit. Because we're both always on the go, and and it's in you, Clark. You needed the more calm, col collected dog. Like I was Jesse. pretty strung out and yeah. ten high tension yeah. most of the time. So yeah. she really evens me out. Now, Andy, how can people help, and how can they apply to get a dog if they need a dog? Um, how do we do this? Well, they can go online to dogsforourbrave.com uh, and donate, of course, because the more money we get, the more dogs we can we can give away. Uh, they can go online to apply for a dog, and uh, we we want to give us way give away as many dogs as we can, of course, to all those who need one. Uh, and those are the two. And now, with the one trainer that you have located right now is in in Arizona, um, he can only do about four to six dogs at one time, though. Is that right? So as you said. Well, we think that's that's a reasonable number. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, but are you going to try to get some other trainers to uh, train dogs to do this for you? Um, that that may yeah. If we get enough soldiers or or, or service people that need dogs, yeah. this is a very young organization. You're just yeah. really getting started, and yeah. so yeah, we oh, you need some money to help these wonderful servicemen. And well, let me well, let yeah. me tell you something else, Melinda. Okay. That most people don't realize that that happens in this world of service dogs and and what's happened with this this horrible war on terror. Uh, a lot of these gentlemen, and, and of course these two are not in this category, but a lot of the guys that, that went to war who were married, came back and have families, uh, there's a lot of wonderful organizations out there, but they, they, they train these service dogs, give them to the service serviceman or women who come back, and they can't afford to put food on the table for their family. So they get the service dog that costs anywhere from ten to $15,000 to train, and the organization says, hey, here's your dog. Good luck. Goodbye. So the service person is kind of stuck in a position where they've got this very expensive, wonderfully trained service dog. But what happens now? Do they, put, do they buy food for their family or do they buy food for the dog? Do they take the dog to the vet or do they buy food for their family or pay their rent? So they're put in a really difficult position. So we made a conscious decision. 
We pay for food for life for the dog. We pay for pharmaceuticals for life, which is the heartworm, flea and tick, and all the other assorted things that the dogs need. And we pay for all the vet care for life for the dog. Wow. So these guys have absolutely no burden whatsoever fiscal, financially for the dogs we give them. And that's for life, for the life of the dog. So they, they pay for nothing. And we made a conscious, conscious decision. We think we really treat our vets like crap. And I, I'm sorry to put it that <laughs> no, way. No, I agree. <laughs> so we said, let's just do this the right way, treat them the right way, the way they should be treated. They put their lives on the lines for, life on the lines for us. Um, we don't worry about things like when we go to our wonderful restaurants for dinner, we don't worry about a bomb going off in the restaurant. We don't worry like they do in France or Germany or Belgium about a bomb blowing up in a cafe. Uh, why don't we worry about that? Because we got guys like this, these heroes right. protecting us. That's right. um, what, what Chris kind of glossed over, but, but really the, the, the meat of the, the situation, the, the fact is he hurt his leg, he lost his leg, he re-enlisted, went back to Afghanistan twice with a prosthetic leg, carrying a 100-pound pack, leading a fire team into combat. He gets hit with an RPG right above him on the second floor of a building, has to jump off the building, lands on his prosthetic leg, has to come back to Walter Reed for a year and a half because they had to take another four inches off his leg, which he doesn't talk about because he's very humble. Another four inches, they have to whack another four inches off his leg. So, I mean, who goes back to to another country to serve for us with a prosthetic leg? Yeah. I mean, that's a hero in, in my <laughs> No mind. joke. No joke. <clears throat> but he doesn't talk about it because he's, he's not that type of guy. That's the kind of guy we want to help. Um, and that's why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. That's why we want to take care of all his, his expenses. That's why we want to do for Clark. Clark's a hero. That's right. Absolutely. And so we want to make sure that Josie's well taken care of. She gets the best food that we, that we can get her. She gets the best vet care. If she gets sick, the vet takes care of her. Clark doesn't worry about the bills. We take care of all the bills. So these guys don't worry about their dogs. We want to make sure the dogs are as well taken care of as they can possibly be. Fantastic. Yep. Absolutely fantastic, Andy. Well, we're going to put all the graphics up for the website and phone numbers and everything. They Wonderful. contact the organization so that you can help raise funds for getting more dogs out for our service. And, and by the way, we're yes. the only organization in the country that does that, that we know of. Yeah. Every other organization. Then they're wonderful organizations, by mm -hmm. the way. They train wonderful dogs. We're the only organization that pays for everything. Fantastic. No, nobody else does that. Well, and I understand because of, you know, every individual <coughs> uh, military person needs for a, for a companion dog, a service dog, is different. So you, cha you train the dog to help that individual with what they need. Well, what, we had one young lady uh, that we gave a dog to, just a sweet young gal who lost her leg above the knee. And the trainers we had previously, who were nice people, they gave her a what, an 86 pound Rottweiler. She weighed 96 pounds. <laughs> And the dog was pulling yeah. her over. No joke. So we had to take this great dog away from her, which broke her heart. Oh. But we did not want to worry about her getting hurt. No joke. Because we gave her a dog. Yeah. So we had to take the dog away from her, and we're training another dog for her that's a much lighter dog. It's, it's more suited to her. The dog is more suited to her. And that's, that's why we have the training we have now. He matches the dog to the service person. And that, that's, that's where the right trainer comes in. Putting the right dog with the right person is as important as the training the dog goes through. Yeah. You have to have that bond. And one thing that sets Dogs for Our Brave apart also is they get rescue dogs. They, We're gonna uh, make, yeah, absolutely mention that. It's, uh, it's yeah. amazing. And I think that deepens the bond between us better because we're kind of saving them as they're definitely saving us. So. And Clark so, is so 100% right. Save a dog, save a soldier. A lot of these dogs, Gabby, uh, uh, Josie. Josie, Champ, um, we, all the dogs we, we saved were in line to be euthanized. Really? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, we don't breed dogs. We don't buy dogs. Uh, we, we take dogs that are rescues. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we think it's very important to do that.
And then I'm sure there's a criteria that you have to have, oh, we have, for, a, we have for the a, rescue dog. Yes, they have to have the right temperament. Mm -hmm. um, Josie, if, if Clark's really tired, Josie can pull his wheelchair. Mm -hmm. You can't get a lightweight dog for Clark. <laughs> no, yeah, no. You know, Clark's Clark's a, a husky, husky guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> so Clark has to have a dog that's that's strong enough to pull him. Uh, if Clark only weighed seventy pounds, eighty pounds, he wouldn't need a big dog. So the trainer knows when we have a a, a, a certain service person in line what his needs are going to be, and we make sure the dog is matched to that service person. Fantastic. Yeah. I think I keep saying that, don't I, Andy? But it is. I well, mean, well, we think it's it just a, a, a wonderful organization, and I see the results of it right here. I mean, these dogs are fantastic dogs and, the, and are brave heroes. That uh, well, When Clark leaves Josie's eyesight, yeah. Josie is, where is, my, where is my master? Where did he go? Yeah. They, they don't want to be out of their sight because it's a love affair. It really is. <laughs> well, and I see Gabby got up in the lap because she needed some attention or something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> or she wanted to be make sure she was on camera. She's still left out down on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, you there, you accept any amount of donation to help the oh, absolutely the dogs to, anything and, and every little bit helps. Yeah. Every little bit helps. Uh, the more money, the more dogs we can pair with soldiers, the more lives we save. It's, and it really does. People, it's. It's kind of hard to articulate it, but these dogs do save lives. We, we think, and Clark was, said it best last week, we think that if we could have gotten a soldier who was in line for a dog soon enough, he would not have taken his life. Yeah. yeah. It's... Makes life worth a living, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Josie, you're going to get up there and so everybody can see your beautiful face, Come huh? Come on. To our beautiful dog. There's no question about that. Come on. Oh, she's... Oh. Get up there. Hey. Dog friendly. Oh. Everything's dog friendly. Hey. Come on. <laughs> That's it. Come on. She's well, tired. Yeah. <laughs> well, she just it, wants me to snuggle. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Well, thank you, gentlemen and doggies, for <laughs> joining me on Talk of the Desert. I want to thank the founder of Dogs for Our Brave, um, Andy Gladstein. Thank you. I mean, this has been phenomenal stories, and I had kind of teared up a little bit. I. I didn't have any Kleenex, so I couldn't play too hard. But <laughs> And I want to thank Corporal Clark Cavalier and his dog, Josie, who is sound asleep right now. <laughs> and First Sergeant Chris Roseberry, uh, who is Army, and yep. his dog, um, Gabby, who it looks too comfortable. <laughs> too comfortable. Thank you, gentlemen and doggies, for joining me on Talk of the Desert. Thank Thanks for having us. And thank you, audience, for joining us. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web.